Today we're gonna be learning how I turned this skyline right here into this skyline right here that I did in my most recent video, Casey Neistat versus the FAA. You can check out that video in the description if you're curious. There's a few basic steps, it shouldn't take long. Let's get right into it. Just go ahead and drag your footage into a new composition here. And the first step is to obviously do some motion tracking. I'm gonna type in 3D camera tracker. We have some 3D depth going on right here and just drag it onto your layer. It's gonna try and solve your camera exactly how it's moving in your actual scene. This will take different times depending on your computer. Once it finishes analyzing, it'll try to solve your camera the best it can. What you wanna do is you just wanna drag through your footage, make sure everything is looking good with the track right here. Um, everything's looking pretty perfect. You're gonna right click right here. It doesn't really matter where you do this, but I'm gonna right click and click create null in camera. This is gonna create a camera in your scene so that any 3D object you put in there is going to match the movement, but you also have to match the positioning of where you want that object to be. So if I put something in this null object's position, but I want it to look like it's in the background right here, it's not gonna be on the correct plane of movement. So with that being established, go ahead and drag in your picture of the skyline or whatever you're trying to replace your sky with. I have a picture of the New York skyline because I want it to look like it's New York and not Kansas City back here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this picture in. I'm gonna hit toggle switch modes until you see this and then click right here and that's gonna make it a 3D layer which is gonna give it actual 3D positioning. And then I'm gonna drag it on top and I'm gonna turn that layer off, click your original footage layer, go up to effects and controls, 3D camera tracker, and this is gonna give you some more points to select. And you're gonna have some way off in the background here and uh, click the farthest one you can because um, we're trying to make it look like the sky and then click create null and then you can see right here it's selected way in the background and uh, I'm just gonna hit P hit control C on the position text and then paste it over to the image turn that back on since it posted it way back in 3d space if you open up the two view horizontal you can see here's the camera right here here's what it's seeing and here's it moving in 3d space and then here's the first null object we made and then if you zoom way out, here it is next null object. So it's actually further in 3D space. So you're going to have to um, scale that layer back up to match. So just hit S and drag up the scale to however big you need it to be. Be careful what planes you're moving this on. Um, this is gonna work for me. I'm just gonna drag it on the Y and X. Also pro tip, if you hold down shift while you slide, it'll move at a 10 times incremental value. So it'll move over a lot quicker if it's further in the distance because if you just try to drag without hitting shift, it's super slow. So if you click on it, hold shift, you should be able to drag quicker. I'm just gonna position this in place how I want it to be. The next step is to drag your footage on top of the image layer. And then we're gonna go over to the effects and presets and type in Luma key. And we're going to basically take the brightest parts of our image right here I'm gonna change this to key out brighter and then drag up the threshold until you get something looking a little bit like that and then since we have the sky here I'm also gonna add a color key effect just gonna drag that on the footage as well and then select this color right here maybe bring up the tolerance a little bit Maybe something like right there. This is looking pretty solid, but obviously we have some messed up stuff right here and this isn't looking great. Um, so what we're gonna do to fix that is we're gonna duplicate this layer, um, turn off the audio. I'm just gonna turn off the audio for both. For the layer we duplicated, turn off the color key and the luma key, then just draw a box mask over this portion of the left side of your footage, then hit the keyframe for the mask path, just to make sure you know it's keeping everything in frame there. That looks good. And as you can see, if you have windows or something that's reflecting in your scene, when you bring in that Luma key, that reflection is gonna be really bright, it's gonna be a highlight. You're gonna see all the deterioration in this image, and I'm about to show you how you can fix that. First, I'm gonna show you how to make the whole image blend better, because right now it's looking like a little too much dynamic range. It doesn't look like it fits. It just looks like it's a picture. I'm gonna go over into the effects and presets tab, type in curves, and then drag that onto the background layer of your matte painting. And I'm just gonna bump up the middle here, of the RGB until it's almost overexposed. I'm also, just to help it blend a little more, I'm gonna enable motion blur for the composition and then enable it for your layer as well so there's a little more blending going on. So as you can see, I brightened up the image and it looks a lot more how it actually would. The GH5 has pretty good dynamic range but it's definitely not gonna be that good. You wanna try and match the color as well as the brightness of your image. This image is pretty well color balanced but you know, maybe it could use a little more red or green. You just kinda have to match it to the best of your ability for your scene this is where I can't completely match 
whatever you're working with. So you just have to find that balance for your shot. So I'm gonna go to the layer we duplicated without the luma key and color key effect. This is kind of the only way to get rid of some of these messier bits right here is I'm gonna draw a mask through here and then around the trees. And you just have to find the bigger portions of your scene that are gonna move obviously, but aren't gonna be too hard to mask out because they're all one solid layer. So you're not gonna have to go every frame, maybe go back a few frames and then scoot it over and then scoot that over. And it's gonna be pretty close. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It's in the background. You wanna match it as close as you can for sure. But as you can see, if you turn that off, there's just, it's hollow because what this Luma key is doing is it's taking the brightest portions and the blue portions that I color picked from the scene. So you have to re-add this layer on top. You just have to move the mask as close as you can. And since in the background, it's not gonna move a whole lot relative. I'm also gonna drag up my background image and then obviously if you have multiple shots in this direction, you have to do your best to match the background plate to look like it was in about the same spot every frame. So I'm going back and then that mask starts to slip up right there. From here, it's all about masking the bigger portions. The tree is gonna look pretty solid. So for my shot here, obviously I had to re-add for these buildings down here, but for your shot, you might not have anything that is also bright in your scene. So essentially all you have to do is go over and mask out where there might be some reflections or where there are any you know, other bright points like this sun right here and this as well. It'll take care of Zach right here, you can see. Um, which is pretty cool because it's almost in a way kind of like an automatic rotoscope when you're working with people because they're obviously not gonna be as bright as your sky is. What you also wanna do is you wanna click that mask, hit F, and then feather it out maybe like eight pixels. So that was a quick and easy tutorial on how to do a Luma Key matte painting. Hopefully you enjoyed this, hope you learned something. I realize this might not work for every single shot, but usually if you're shooting outside, it works pretty well. Let me know if any of this was confusing, comment down below, I respond to every single comment. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, I'm uploading a video every single day for the rest of 2017. Peace, bye, peace, peace.